Hello, uh, I'm Mrs. Rees, uh, and I'd like to just tell you a little bit about history A-level um, and what we cover here. Uh, so, um, I'm just going to tell you a, a little bit about the, what we study um, at A-level and then also a little bit about why this is a useful A-level um, for you to have. So, we follow the OCR A-level history syllabus. Uh, this has three examined parts in it um, and a piece of coursework. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit um, about the three units that we do. So, the first one that we uh, look at is this um, England 1485 to 1558, the early Tudor modules. This is a period of significant change uh, in English history, looking at how Henry VII establishes himself on the throne um, and the things that he does to, to uh, make England powerful. We look at how he passes the throne on to his son, Henry VIII, um, and the havoc that he wreaks uh, really on the English church and the impact of the Reformation. Uh, and then we look at the rule of the Little Tudors, uh, or sometimes known as the Mid-Tudor Crisis, Edward and Mary, a boy and a woman on the throne. The second unit um, that we do is a non-British period study. Um, and for this, we offer two different options, dependent on which class you're in. Uh, the first option is the French Revolution and the rule of Napoleon. Uh, we always aim to offer this unit. Um, the French Revolution is obviously a hugely significant event uh, in European history, uh, and Napoleon was one of Europe's most famous rulers. Uh, the course looks at the causes of the French Revolution um, and the developments of Napoleon's rule. If we can, uh, we also offer Italy, 1896 to 1943. Uh, and this course looks at the emergence of Italy as a modern country um, before the outbreak of World War I, and then we look at Mussolini, uh, his seizure of power, uh, and the impact of World War II. The third module, um, and this is the biggest one uh, of our A-level, is Russia and its Rulers, 1855 to 1964. Um, this is a thematic study, so you can see that it covers 100 years um, of Russian history. Um, this looks at um, how the Tsars uh, took control over Russia, what life was like um, under them, how they attempted to reform Russia and the growth of opposition to the monarchy and its subsequent overthrow in 1917. Um, we look at the rule of Lenin and Stalin um, and the impact that they have on uh, Russia as a communist power. Uh, and finally, we consider Khrushchev's regime um, and his attempts to reform Soviet government. So this is comprised of a, a big thematic uh, set of questions, but also uh, we have three depth studies here where we look at Alexander II's uh, government, the provisional government, and Khrushchev in power in a little bit more depth. The final part of your A-level is made up of a piece of coursework, the non-examined assessment. Um, and this is where you will write uh, an answer to a question between three and 4,000 words. There's a little bit of freedom uh, in terms of what you can choose here. We offer a range of topics, um, and you basically pick a, a question that you're interested in. This can stem uh, from one of the examined units, like Fascist Italy, or the French Revolution, um, or Russia, or it can be a, a different area of history uh, that you're interested in, um, as long as one of the history teachers has some sort of knowledge uh, of what you're looking at. Um, so this is a little bit of freedom for you to investigate um, a topic and an area in a little bit more depth. So what are the right reasons to choose an A-level and why is history uh, a good option? Well, obviously, we, we want you to pick an A-level because you enjoy the subject, maybe because it has requirements for a future career, um, but also because of maybe some transferable skills. Studying history provides you with skills which are not just confined uh, to the past. Skills of analysis, interpretation, understanding um, different ways uh, that we can interpret the past um, are all really important um, jobs, as is being able to make decisions and to prioritise. Studying history allows you to develop these skills. There's a bit of a stigma uh, attached to history that it's based entirely in the distant past, uh, but this doesn't really uh, take account for the huge amount of modern history uh, which is studied in depth. And it's really important uh, that we can understand the past in order uh, to make sense of, of the current affairs that are happening around us. Um, history gives you a, a really good grounding um, in that, and knowledge isn't just handed over, it, it's hard work, uh, and in a subject dominated by reading, this really gives you a, a good opportunity uh, to be self-sufficient uh, and just be less dependent um, pupils. 
If you uh, look at human history, there are particular patterns um, which emerge over again, uh, whether it's the role of charismatic dictators like Caesar uh, to the role of Hitler um, or the significance of religion um, in uh, human conflict. Uh, we have an outstanding ability to avoid what's happened um, in the past uh, and studying history uh, allows us to make sure that we don't do that in the future. Okay. Studying A-level also gives you uh, a huge number uh, of different options. It's a highly regarded academic subject um, and recommended by Cambridge as a core academic subject to help keep your options open. Um, as we've said, there's a huge number of transferable skills uh, that can be useful in a whole range uh, of different careers. Thank you.